welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Lola, and today we are diving into another episode of Pathology. The way this works is that I select a few posts from obese people seemingly belonging to fat acceptance or healthy at every size movements, and I react to them. If you want more content from this channel, then consider subbing and smash that notification bell to be sure not to miss anything. Alright, then this is it. If fat is not a feeling, how can someone tell if they're actually fat? Straight size, not actually fat. Small fat, meat fat, super fat, infinite fat. Actually fat? Wait, what is this? So, if you are straight sized, you're not actually fat. But if you are small fat, mid fat, super fat, infinite fat, you are actually fat. What are those categories? Who made them? You can tell if and where you fall on the fat spectrum based on your level of access to clothing and seating. Straight size, not actually fat. Small fat, mid fat, super fat, infinite fat. Fat. If you are so fat that you cannot find clothing, then don't blame society and demand that society cater to your poor choices. Instead, blame yourself for letting yourself reach that point. And if you insist on staying your size, which is fine, it's your choice. But how about you learn to make your own clothes? Because you can do that. You know that, right? And just out of curiosity, you holding these signs, in which category do you fall into? If you hold your breath for a long time and finally take your first panicked inhale, no one calls it loss of control breathing or binge breathing. We need that perspective for eating. If you hold your breath for a long time and finally take your first panicked inhale, no one calls it loss of control breathing or binge breathing. It's a natural compensatory response to air deprivation. We need that perspective for eating. A certified eating disorder registered dietitian wrote this. Seriously, this kind of nonsense should qualify you for loss of your license. Breathing versus eating. You would die if you stop breathing, yes. But it is not the case for eating. It doesn't work like that. Are you continuously eating for 24 hours every single day? Is that what keeps you alive? Like, seriously, do you ever sleep? How does it work for you? <laughs> According to this post, I shouldn't even be alive right now, as my last meal was a few hours ago. Or did I die and I'm now a ghost? Living a full life might mean learning to accept a larger body. If you're someone for whom living in a thinner body requires constant vigilance of your food intake and sacrificing your mental and emotional health, is thinness really worth the cost? Sometimes living in a smaller body requires living a smaller life. If living a full life, feeling free around food, and having time to dedicate to what really lights you up. If all of that means that you have to give up dieting and learn to accept a larger body, it might be worth focusing on accepting your body instead of changing it. Your choices are yours to make, and clearly you have chosen to be in a larger body, which is fine, it's your choice. But don't try to convince others to make the same choices just because you want more people to join you so that you will feel good about yourself and your poor choices. I'm so embarrassed of the first picture but so proud of how far I've come. This is what going from 238 to 134 looks like. Skinny 
you shaming, okay? Because this lady is clearly proud of the work that she put to be where she is today. Why is it such a bad thing? So instead of celebrating her, which by the way, you don't have to do, but you choose to skinny shame her. And again, you don't have to do that either. If you don't like before and after pictures, just ignore them. Move on with your life. You are not forced to give them any attention. And I will add to your post, you don't have to skinny shame others just because they don't look like you. Just because they lost to wait, something that you refuse to do. You don't. So what you're doing, I would say is hashtag health phobia, hashtag pit phobia. If you're looking to lose weight temporarily, gain it all back and damage your relationship with food and your body, then yes, diets work. The most likely result of intentional weight loss, dieting, is weight gain. We fooled into thinking that diets work because they often do result in weight loss initially and then when we gain it back, we blame ourselves instead of the diet. But several studies over the past 50 years have found that over 95-98% to 98 of dieters regain the weight they lost within 5 years. Dieting damages our relationship with food and our body by teaching us that our bodies can't be trusted. We abandon our natural intuition about what our bodies need in favor of rules that dictate when, what, and how much we eat. And when our bodies don't comply, when the weight doesn't stay off, our body image suffers. Don't be fooled by the before and after photos with the inspirational captions. Diet do result in weight loss for many people at least at first. They can also lead to disordered eating, poor body image, and eventual weight gain. Is short-term weight loss really worth it? First of all, I'd like to see the source where you're getting those numbers from then it is supposed to be long-term lifestyle change of course if you go back to your previous lifestyle yes the weight is going to come back because that's the lifestyle that made you gain weight to begin with don't blame the diet but yourself your old ways are what made you gain the weight your old ways are what is making you gain the weight back so don't blame diets for your poor choices and your inability to remain focused, consistent, and rigorous. If you like what you see here, then like and subscribe if you are new. And as usual, if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, please comment below. Thanks for tuning in and see you soon.